Yes, yeah, Mark. Man, you are being such a good person right now. Hey, shout out to all of our fans in Los Angeles. You're holding off on talking about the Lakers. I reason. am. Okay. I am. Man, I, shout out to you, I am DP. trying. Very thoughtful. I'm trying. It's over, Johnny. It is over. It is over just the season. The question is, how over is over for the Lakers? Because if you would have said that AD would play in over 70 games, and LeBron, and Austin Reeves, I mean, they had a nucleus here that they played together, played healthy. They had a nice season. You just run into the wrong team again, and I think they thought they had some answers there, but they didn't, and I think that's that's what's interesting, an interesting case study of what happens in the offseason. Darvin Ham is probably going to pay the price here. And then LeBron, does he opt out? He wants uh, the Lakers to draft Bronny. And, well, there's a lot of pressure on Bronny. Because I think Bronny should be going to Duquesne and play another year. But it feels like the clock is ticking on his dad. He wants to play with his son. Now the Lakers, you bring LeBron back. And the, all the reports are they want LeBron back badly. And then what do you do with Bronny? Are you going to draft him? What if somebody else drafts him instead of you? Uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell, what do you do with him? I mean, they... I thought they had the depth this year. I thought that this, you know, they made some uh, moves in the offseason. I thought that they had enough to at least go back to the Western Conference Finals. But look, when you're struggling to get into a play-in game, that the West is young, and they looked old at times. And as once again, last night, they try to win the game in the first half. They're always leading halftime. And I always say, Okay, Denver's going to win. Now, let's be fair. That was a really, really close game. And, uh, you know, you had Jamal Murray hitting the, the uh, game-winning shot there. Can you think of a superstar who doesn't always take the last shot? Almost prefers not to. Because I can think of Magic Johnson, and I can think of Jokic. Larry Bird's going to take the shot. Michael would always want to take the shot. There are times when he had to pass on. But, I mean, how many great players? I could say Steve Nash, but Steve Nash was a pass-first guy to begin with. But, you know, star players in those moments, and there's Joker out there trying to set a pick, and then Jamal Murray, you know, that's two in the, um, the four wins, hitting jumpers. But you have to have an ego to, to be great. But you also have to have less of an ego to say, I don't have to be the one who's great. If it makes more sense for that guy to take the shot. And I found that really interesting last night. Because I kept thinking, okay, are they going to do pick and roll, Joker hits a jumper. And then all of a sudden he's out there, he gets a little bit tangled up, and then Murray off the dribble and then hits the game winner. But not many great players of all time. Now, I'm not talking Bill Russell because Bill Russell wasn't that go-to scorer. Uh, you know, Jerry West's going to take the shot. Uh, down through history, Reggie Miller's going to take the shot. The great players want the ball, but then I, I'm watching Joker and go, I don't know if it matters to him. So when Joker is your third leading scorer, he also had 20 rebounds. <laughs> yes. And nine assists. A afterthought. Yes. Now, he didn't play a great game. I think he had seven turnovers. But, but still, he puts in those numbers. And you have other players. I mean, that's what makes them dangerous. You know, keep in mind, Jamal Murray, you know, supposedly had a calf injury. And, and they didn't even know if he was playing last night. And then he puts up 32. Like, pretty amazing. And you got to want that shot because, you know, there's part of that where you go, well, of course I want to be uh, the hero and take the game-winning shot. There are a lot of guys who have alligator arms when it comes to that final shot. Like, eh, I don't want it. Because you have to live with whatever the result is. And Jamal Murray, who once again has never made an all-star team, came back from a devastating injury and is really one of those guys when you watch, and we even said this going into the game, he's one of those guys where you go, Golly, that's another big shot. Like it's almost to the point, if I'm him, I don't want to make the all-star team. 
Like, I'd rather it be like, how did he not make the all-star team? Yes, Marv. It's like Bob Marley never winning a Grammy Award. No, no, you can have it. Like, a great player never winning a Grammy or, or great, great artist, that's him. You know what? You can have the all-star, all-NBAs. I'm going to take these rings. And that's why we don't want a sports Emmy. <laughs> we don't need it. We want to be snubbed. We're the Jamal Murray sports broadcasting here. We want to be snubbed.